Hi everyone, I'm Ryan from Go Natural English, and today I'm talking about tongue twisters. And before I say anything else, I have just one question. How many cans can a can canner can if a can canner can can a can? Now, if you know the answer, let me know in the comments down below. But otherwise, I've put together a collection of tongue twisters or groups of words and phrases that are difficult to pronounce quickly in order to help you improve your fluency. So when we want to run faster or jump higher or lift more weight, we exercise. And in the same way, when we want to pronounce something better or have better speech, better fluency, we need to exercise. And tongue twisters are like exercises for your pronunciation. So in today's lesson, I've put together 10 different tongue twisters that you can use to help expand your vocabulary, practice your pronunciation, and overall improve your fluency. And make sure you watch to the end of the video to learn the scientifically proven world's most difficult English tongue twister. And if you like these English tips, consider giving this video a thumbs up and let us know what kind of content you like best and how we can continue to grow this awesome Go Natural community. All right, let's get after it. So I want to start with some of the more common, well-known tongue twisters. These ones are pretty easy once you get the rhythm and most people, most English speakers will know them. They'll be familiar with these tongue twisters. And it's also a good way for us to warm up as we move along because the tongue twisters are gonna get harder the farther down the list we go until we reach the most difficult tongue twister in the world. Number one, how much wood could a woodchuck chuck of woodchuck could chuck wood? This is a very famous tongue twister. Many people know this. This is how you pronounce it a little bit slower. How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? So this tongue twister focuses on the W sounds and the O sounds for wood and wood. And a woodchuck is a bird. I've never seen a woodchuck. I don't even know what it looks like. And the only reason I know that it is a bird is because of this tongue twister. How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Let's try that again. Okay, so repeat after me. How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood. How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? So it's a very simple rhythm and once you get it, it's very easy to, to do it quickly and do it very fast. Yeah, woodchuck is a good warm up for today's lesson. Now, number two is a little bit more difficult, but it's also very famous and once you get the rhythm, I think you'll be able to kill it. Quickly pronouncing it, it sounds like this. Silly Sally sells seashells by the seashore. Obviously, this tongue twister focuses on the S sound. Slowly, it is. Silly Sally sells seashells by the seashore. Silly Sally sells seashells by the seashore. Silly Sally sells seashells by the seashore. This is a good one if you struggle with the S and the SH pronunciation, especially when they're back to back. All right, so we've finished with Silly Sally and we're moving on to number three, Peter Piper. Now this is a tongue twister which focuses on the letter P. So if you have trouble pronouncing P, especially back to back or in the popping sound, this will be a good tongue twister to practice with. This is a very famous one. I think many people, many Americans, are familiar with this tongue twister. And there's a long version, but today we're just taking the main idea and using just one sentence. So let's take a look. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Let's try it together slowly. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Okay, now let's try it fast. <sighs> Peter Piper picked a pick of peppers. I missed a word. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Oh, that was it. I did it. Yes. I'm not, this is, this one's difficult for me. 
I gotta practice more, but this is a good one, like I said, if you need help with the letter P, or if you just wanna sound impressive, because it's a very famous one, and if you can do it quickly, I think many people will be impressed. Now we're gonna move into some of the more challenging tongue twisters. So I already struggled a little bit with Peter Piper, so you can bet that as we move down the list, I'm going to really struggle with some of these tongue twisters. But the first one I wanna start with of the more challenging, maybe lesser known tongue twisters is one that I created. So I studied with many Brazilians in the university and they had trouble with the er sound. And so I came up with this tongue twister, which was very challenging for them and hopefully is challenging for you. So it looks like this. World War Whirlpool. There's a lot of er sounds. It's the deep guttural R sound. Er. World War Whirlpool. World War Whirlpool. Try to say it quickly. It's not so easy. So we start with World War Whirlpool. If you don't know what a whirlpool is, a whirlpool is like a little cyclone in the water. Uh, it's just like a tornado in, in, in the ocean. It's a whirlpool, but it's really small. It's not like a hurricane or something like that. It's, it's small, and but you don't want to get stuck in a whirlpool. So quickly, let's try to say it very fast. World War Whirlpool. World War Whirlpool. World War Whirlpool. But it's definitely a challenge, and I think a lot of my other foreigners, not just my Brazilian friends, a lot of other foreigners have trouble with this R sound in the back of the mouth. So this is a good way to practice that sound. World War Whirlpool. All right, let's move on. So this next tongue twister has a word that you might not know. Do you know what a gargoyle is? So a gargoyle is a human-esque animal creature statue that's on the side of old gothic buildings or you know an old church maybe this tongue twister is difficult to pronounce because of the g sounds so gargoyle already has two g's and this tongue twister adds to that looking at it and pronouncing it slowly boy gargoyle girl gargoyle boy gargoyle girl gargoyle when you go slow, it's not so bad. But try saying it three times fast. Boy girl 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 boy girl 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 boy girl 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 girl. It's hard to do it without laughing, but it's also hard to pronounce it with all of those G sounds in there. Boy girl 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 boy girl 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 boy girl 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 girl. How did you do? Hopefully you enjoy that one and you learned a new word with gargoyle. And our next tongue twister might also have a new word for you. Are you familiar with benevolent? Benevolent is a word which means good-willed or kind. So you might say, if an old man gives a homeless person some money, you, you could say, oh, he's a benevolent old man. So this tongue twister is like this. 11 benevolent elephants. There's a lot of E sounds and a lot of combinations of similar sounding sounds, which make this one tough. Pronouncing slowly is easy. 11 benevolent elephants. But when you try to go fast, you might be saying benelephants. Let's try it together quickly. 11 benevolent elephants. 11 benevolent elephants. Maybe you can do it one time, but now try it three times quickly. Let's see if we can do it. I'll go first. 11 benevolent elephants, 11 benevolent elephants, 11 benevolent elephants. <sighs> I was close. I didn't get it perfectly, but I was close. So this is a good one to practice E sounds and combinations of similar sounding sounds. So you have the elephant, benevolent, it's, it's rhyming sounds back to back quickly. And this will help to pronounce things like, obviously in this case, benevolent and elephant, but then in other similar situations, you might be able to pronounce them easier by practicing quick rhyming, rhyming in succession. The seventh tongue twister of today is three words that we all know and are very easy, but when you put them together, it's nearly impossible to say them quickly. Good blood, bad blood. Good blood, bad blood. Pronouncing them slowly might not be so much of a challenge, but let's try to do it quickly. Good blood, bad blood. I said blad blood, <laughs> okay? Now, if you try and do this three times fast, it's almost impossible. I'll try it, and so you can see. Good blood, bad blood, good blood, bad blood, good blood, bad blood. I'm, I'm losing my mind when I try to go quickly. If you can do it one time, this is a success. So good blood, bad blood. Next 
is another famous one that all of my friends did when we were little. We would always challenge each other to say this three times fast. And it's so simple. It's only two words, common simple words. So number eight is toy boat. Toy boat. Oh, look at that toy boat over there. That was no problem, it's a toy boat. But if you try to say it three or five times fast, you lo start losing all pronunciation. Toy boat, toy boat, toy boat, toy boat, toy boat. I'm totally not saying it correctly, but it's a fun one to always challenge. You can challenge any of your English speaking friends. And if any of them can do it, that is absolutely amazing. I've never seen a native English speaker pronounce this one perfectly five times in a row quick. It's impossible almost. We're moving into the last two, which are very difficult. And I might have to pause in the middle of them because I have trouble pronouncing them. So number nine is kind of awkward because it uses Shakespeare style English. There's a lot of E-T-H at the end of the words in this sentence. So let's take a look. The seething sea ceaseth us, and thus the seething sea sufficeth us. So the TH sound has given many ESL learners problems. And this tongue twister might be some good practice to help with your pronunciation and your fluency with this sound. So let's try this together. But first, let me tell you what seething is. Seething, in this case, means hectic or wild. So the seething sea is the crazy, the chaotic sea. But seething can also mean very, very angry, but you don't show it. So that's seething. I'm seething with anger. Let's try to pronounce this, the whole sentence together. The seething sea ceaseth us. The seething sea ceaseth us. And thus, the seething sea sufficeth us. So ceaseth and sufficeth, we would never say these words like this. So this is some Shakespeare looking words. But all together, trying to say the sentence fast, so difficult. The seething sea ceaseth us, and thus the seething sea sufficeth us. Uh, okay, it's very difficult, but even just practicing this tongue twister slowly can help and improve your TH pronunciation. So number 10. This tongue twister was discovered by researchers at MIT, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. And they studied dozens of different tongue twisters and analyzed the sound patterns that speakers produced when pronouncing these different tongue twisters. And this was the one that was the most difficult. Pad, kid, poured, curd, pulled, cod. I've been practicing this one a lot for this video, but before I had to pause multiple times just to pronounce it. There's such variation in the sounds of this sentence. And the sentence itself doesn't make so much sense. It means something like, the kid from pad is pouring the curd pulled, so a, a, a style of, of meat from a fish. Trying to pronounce it quickly, I have never once been able to do it. But let's try to do it together slowly. Pad, kid, poured, curd, pulled, cod. Pad, kid, poured, curd, pulled, cod. Pad, kid, poured, curd, poured, cod. I can't. I can't do it. Can you do it? Pad, kid, poured, curd, poured, cod. It's not, it's not possible for me to do this one. I've tried it many times. I've been practicing for this video. I'll try it one more time. <sighs> Pad kid port court port cod. Ah, I was close, but it's really difficult. How did you do? Yeah, there's been a lot of tongue twisters that we've learned today. 10 different ones, including the scientifically proven world's most difficult. Which one was most difficult for you? Or which one did you like best? Let me know in the comments down below. And while you're down there, and if you want extra free English tips sent directly to your inbox, we can do that for you. You can sign up for our email newsletter in the description below. So I hope you enjoyed today's lesson, and I'm sure if you keep practicing, you'll be a powerful pronunciation prince or princess. And if you'd like to continue on your English journey, you can check out one of our other videos. And until then, I'm Ryan, this is Go Natural English, and I'll see you next time. Ciao!